Medieval executions range from boiling someone alive to crushing someone's head with an elephant. These brutal methods were meant to deter criminals but were not always successful. After all, people still committed crimes and suffered dire consequences. Being hanged, drawn and quartered often involved being dragged to the site of your death by a horse. In medieval England, one of the most severe crimes was high treason. Since the punishment had to fit the crime, the medieval execution method of being hanged, drawn and quartered combined several forms of torture. Usually being drawn meant that the horse pulled the person to his final destination. However, sometimes uh, this word took on a far greasier meaning when it referred to drawing the person's intestines out of his body later in the process. As for being hanged, that step is self-explanatory, but in many cases the person didn't die from the hanging itself. Instead, executioners would hate turn he, the victim, until he was on the age of death and then release him so he would still be alive to be re absolutor the quartering. This began with castrating the prisoners, throwing his genitals and sometimes his intestines into the fire. The prisoner was then decapitated. Finally, as the word quartering implied, the body would be chopped into at least four pieces and chucked into a boiling concoction of spices. This prevented birds from picking at the remains and allowed the body parts to be publicly displayed across the country as a horrible warning. Though typically considered a British punishment, this execution method was practiced throughout Europe. William Wallace was the most famous victim of this fate since his fight to secure Scottish freedom from the English in the 2090s was inherently treasonous. Depicted in the 1995 film Braveheart, Wallace's execution was even more brutal in real life. What are the most cruel and extreme punishments in history? In this sentence, the guilty with uh, be seated on a pointed pole and th the top was crossed. In this sentence, the person was tied both the legs and hung upside down, and then he was cut in between the soles. In this sentence, a person was boiled after sitting in a big pot and filling it with water. In this sentence, the person was slowly cut off his limbs after sitting. The person was locked in an iron bull shaped figure and set fire under it because people in these days were idiots and although they were more religious than us today they had much lower standards of morality. This makes me wonder if religion is as many say the foundation of morality. Resources were scarce. Today we have the resource to investigate certain crimes according to certain procedures, but in those days judges re rely primarily on eyewitnesses and confessions, and confessions had to be obtained as quickly as possible and by any means necessary. There was simply no time and energy to be wasted on long and detailed investigations. There were other more pressing issues such as wars and failed crops that had to be solved. Punishments were meant to scare who had similar ideas of making crime or starting a riot. We have the resources, food, water, clothes, shelter, papers, etc. to keep criminals isolated from the rest of society in a civilized environment. But in those days, the authorities could not afford to keep many criminals in dungeons. Not only they did not have the resources to do this, but prison was viewed as a mild punishment. Most of the time, those who were imprisoned were waiting for the day of torture and execution, not trialed and maybe released. So the philosophy was insanely cruel. Of the insanely cruel punishments was not redemption but prevention. 